Hey guys, what's up? Uh, hope all you guys are well. Um, Agren shared a nice little tweet last night um, asking for community feedback on upcoming class changes. And this made me think that I would like to share my opinion about Season of Discovery and its current state and about potential changes that should be done in my opinion. Um, hope you guys like the video and I will um, add some PvP clips, this time without a commentary, while I share my opinion and thoughts on uh, with you. But first, check out this nice little glow that my new wand has. Doesn't this look awesome? Um, I managed to upgrade my Nomregan wand today to this one, which I got for 12G from the auction house. It has one more spell damage, uh, 10 instead of the 9 from the Gnomeregan, and it also has two more DPS on the um, on the actual uh, wand attack. So yeah, wanted to share this one. Now right off the bat, I can tell you guys, I am having fun in Season of Discovery. I've been playing it a lot, uh, probably too much, probably eight hours a day at least. Um, I like it. Uh, I'm really a vanilla classic type player who enjoys this much more than actual retail or TBC or Wrath. But nonetheless, um, I have uh, some issues with Season of Discovery, um, especially uh, regards to the clutter of abilities. Now, I do not think we need any class improvements at all in terms of new abilities. I do not think every single rune slot should be a meaningful rune or ability. Uh, I like that some of them are passive effects. But I think that in general damage is just a bit too high. Um, for sure in PvP, I mean I'm a soul link warlock, I'm a tanky caster that dots and I'm killing people quite fast. Maybe not this Pala, but you will see in the next clip that I'm killing some people really within three or four globals. But I'm mainly also talking about the bursty classes, right? That one-shot you, and I think um, that should not be the case. I do like the fact that all the gear has more HP on it now, but um, in general, if we are also talking about the environment, I personally feel that the mobs in the open world die too fast as well. Now, obviously, Season of Discovery is supposed to be catering a bit more to the casual players. I fully agree with that. I think that's a positive thing. Um, not everybody has 10 hours a day to play this video game. Uh, I get that. It's good for all of us that th this game is quite popular, so Blizzard continues doing it. Um, all of that is totally fine. But in general, I think one of the best parts of a game like World of Warcraft is the rewarding part when you actually earn a gear upgrade. Take, for example, the Roar of the Dream Ring from the Emerald Wardens. To get exalted really doesn't take you that long, it takes you 10-15 hours. Even casual players will get this within 2-3 weeks. And actually then having this item, to me, feels much more rewarding than getting lucky on some uh, raid uh, item roll. So I really enjoy that part and uh, it's the same with PvP gear. I like the fact that they added that. Everybody or anyone can manage this honor grind uh, now that is needed for rank 7. Uh, it's not really challenging, especially not compared to Classic, but still you need to invest, invest a little bit of time, and I really like that. Now, after listening to me so far, it probably won't come as a surprise that I am against this whole accelerated leveling. I don't think this leveling boost is a good thing. I think probably it's a good thing for alts if people don't want to level over and over and over, and I know all of you guys have leveled various characters already, but for me, it's not just about being at max level. You know, I'm a PvP player. I like open world PvP a lot. Obviously, as a warlock, it can be a lot of fun because Soul Link is so strong. And I like encountering other people while leveling in the open world. And I think usually the things Blizzard does to get people into the open world, for example, world buffs or incursions, are usually a good thing because this yeah, makes the world much fuller and much more exciting uh, compared to other games where people are just standing AFK in the capital. I wanted to address also the part of the WoW economy and Season of Discovery. I am an economist in real life myself uh, and I enjoy trading a lot. So um, here are my thoughts. I think this whole flooding players with gold is actually really a bad thing. Um, we have accessing gold is way, way too easy. Um, I think I got about 2k gold by doing my Marodon runs to get my Blade of Eternal Darkness. I think my Incursion grind yielded me over 1000 gold. 
And while I do see the advantage of flooding the economy with gold, because this means that basically all the botting is kind of useless. Now with no GDKP raids anymore, with people getting as much gold as I got in these last days, um, I, I see even for gold buyers no more incentive to actually buy um, because everybody has good access to gold. But on the downside, this essentially makes gold completely irrelevant in this game because even consumes now uh, might be expensive in terms of actual gold value, but they're really, really cheap in terms of time invested to actually farm that gold. So I think cl in classic gold has always been a relevant uh, resource and farming that has actually also always been fun to me because it's another thing that gets people in the open world. Okay, there are some methods like boosting and dungeon grinding, which I might not like, but I'm looking more at the positives here. Next up, I'd like to talk about raiding. I know many of you guys and many players of Season Discovery in general um, really like raiding and think raiding is the main content of the game. Um, personally, I view it a bit different. Uh, I mean, if one plays three hours a day, that's 21 hours a week. Uh, Sunken Temple will take you one hour in its current state, meaning you're spending less than 5% of your playtime actually in raids. Uh, and people like me who actually play double or triple that uh, spend even less time in, in, in raids in a percentage wise. Now obviously many of us are going to be looking forward to level 60 when we hopefully have several raids available at the same time, uh, which provides more content for us on a weekly basis. Now I won't go thoroughly into the raid difficulty, I do think Sunken Temple is too easy in its current state. Um, I would have liked it to be a little bit more challenging. I think Nomergan was more challenging than Sunken Temple is now, but I get the approach and therefore it's fine for me. One of the big debates in the Warlock Discord is always that caster damage is too low compared to melee damage. Personally, I don't get this at all. Um, I mean, I'm not a progress raider that tries to be world first in terms of raid clear time. I don't really care about that. I just go in, have one hour of fun DPSing dragons and go back out. Um, to me, it's completely irrelevant if casters or melee do more damage um, because uh, as long as the raid is clearable by casters, uh, then I don't get why the damage has to be exactly the same or close to the same in terms of balancing. I don't think balancing is an issue in casual games like Season of Discovery at all. And uh, I think Warlock is always in a good spot. And I also think groups will always bring good Warlocks. I mean, obviously the utility provided by the Curses is one of the reasons. But another reason is as long as you are well prepared, meaning you actually farm the gear that you can farm by yourself, you got consumes, you got world buffs, and you actually know how to play your class, meaning you have done one or two parses in Sunken Temple already and have shown that you're not running gray or green lugs, but actually know how to do damage, then I don't see any situation unless you're in the top 0.01% of the world and uh, where people are not going to bring you. The biggest issue I have right now with the Season of Discovery Sunken Temple raid is actually one of the itemization. I mean, for one, the itemization in Phase 3 has been really good, meaning uh, you don't rely on raid gear, but you can actually farm some gear open world, mainly being the PvP set, the Emerald Warden set, um, items like the Emerald Warden uh, ring, also items like this uh, Court of the Untamed that you get from the Blood Offerings, same as the Trinket that you get from the Blood Offerings. I like all of that, um, but the main issue for me is the Sunken Temple loot and the drop rates. Uh, we are getting flooded with tokens that nobody needs. For PvP, these uh, uh, PvE tokens are not really that much needed. And for PvE raids themselves, I mean, the Gnome Regan caster set performs 5 DPS lower than the Sunken Temple set. So it really isn't an upgrade at all. The issue I see is not on the set items, but actually on the non-set items. Now, if we look into the loot table, um, there are a couple of items that I mean here. I'm not going to go into any of the PvE items, but I'm going to go just for the items that are relevant in PvP. For example, this neck. I mean, you can get this neck off one boss in this dungeon. And uh, in my raid, we have 12 healers plus casters. So if this drops, it's good for all of the casters. And uh, yeah, the chances are getting that. I mean, first of all, it has to drop. And when it does drop, uh, yeah, you're going to be rolling against 10 other people, um, which is really, really tricky. Uh, and especially if this phase only lasts for 10 or 12 weeks, um, 
yeah, this problem will be that you will not get any of these items. Uh, same goes for the main hand. I mean, this obviously would be ideal if you're going for the spell damage uh, setup uh, in open world and PvP. Um, but I'm also talking about the um, the offhand, which is actually huge. Having a 30 spell damage offhand would be huge this phase. But again, you're competing with other players. Uh, if on this you might be competing with a bit less. Uh, same goes obviously for the staff if you want to go for that. Same goes for the wand. Um, now people may ask why is this wand better than mine? It has one less damage and only five int. Who cares about int? Well, it's just the damage. I mean in open world scenarios, I do wand from time to time. And having 10 more DPS um, is a nice little small upgrade that I'd like to have. Um, but now actually that the Dark Moon card Torment got nerfed, actually the item I'm trying to get the most is the Trinket. Uh, and this one, I mean. Uh, now obviously this Trinket, uh, I think the boss always drops one of these, so the drop chance is actually 33%. But again, uh, in my raid, about five other casters would like to get this. Um, so you have to have a luck by getting this to drop and then five people need it. I mean, what are the chances that all five of us will get this until the next phase? Probably pretty slim. So in general, I criticize Blizzard for um, saying that they have they will be flooding us with loot when in fact all they're giving us is tokens and not really the bis items that we should have. Now I'm not saying we need free handouts. I'm just saying that the itemization here I think is more ideal if we're looking at level 60 end game content, meaning there's no uh, limited time only where these raids stay relevant, but rather a more longer time, um, but at level 50, I would have hoped that there are more more comparable items or that at least these crucial items can drop from multiple bosses because the change that we have only one ID per seven days and the f f fact that we have now 20 players instead of 10 uh, do make a big difference and I can tell you by this time in Nomregan I actually already had various of my offset pieces now after completing yesterday's raid. Uh, we have seen good drops, I just haven't been able to get them because I was outrolled by others. And uh, I can say after three IDs, not having any items except for tokens uh, doesn't feel that great, I have to admit. Now last but not least, I would like to discuss about the um, uh, communication of the uh, Zod development team. Uh, while many people do enjoy that they are sharing some information with us, I kind of want to put this as a negative, uh, not the sharing part, but actually recently I've a little bit, felt a little bit tricked um, because they are doing so many changes that actually are not mentioned uh, as a blue post and not mentioned on Twitter neither. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the adjustments of the raid, which not all of them were actually blue posted. I'm talking about the constant adjustments of gold rewards in Incursion Quest. I'm talking about the drop rate of the Blade of Eternal Darkness, which was leaked via some streamer, but actually um, was not uh, was not officially put on a blue post that they adjusted this from 0.2% and 2%. And believe me, guys, they did. Uh, I did over 200 runs without a drop. The next day, um, I did 20 runs, and immediately this thing dropped. Maybe I got very, very lucky, but uh, I have to say that... Uh, it's not just me. I mean, the Warlock Discord was full of people who got this, and it can't be a coincidence that after the maintenance comes back up, they change this. So, um, and this is not all. I mean, uh, there have been more than just these three examples, and I think that, uh, yeah, this is, uh, it goes to show that it's kind of like a beta phase. Oh, guys, one more fun thing. Recently, I've really enjoyed sniping these portals away from other guys. Um, I mean, I don't really care about any of the drops in there, uh, despite the trinket actually being pretty good in PvE, the one with that increase the dots. But, you know, going to one of these portals, seeing a metamorphosis lock, and you guys know... Oh, wow, he's respawning. Um, you guys know I don't like meta locks, and uh, seeing them try to go for this portal is just amazing when you can basically take it away from them. This video is now coming to an end. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in, as always. Um, feel free to subscribe and uh, hit me up with any questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer them, or just send me a message on Discord um, to Gold Bowser, and I'd be happy to discuss a few things with you. Um, see you next time, and uh, enjoy the PvP.